Hello, Hello everyone, I'm Kira Phillips. And I'm Terry Moran. The UN today says the official death count of civilians in Ukraine is at 564, but actually the number is likely much, much higher than that. For the latest on the ground, let's bring in foreign correspondent Maggie Ruley in Lviv, Ukraine, along with Phil Lipoff across the border in Poland and Alex Brochet in Washington for all the very latest. Maggie, let's go ahead and start with you. Let's talk about the Russians, uh, what they are targeting today, Ukrainian forces making headway. Can you just give us an update? Uh, yeah, but something that's been concerning us in western Ukraine today is we're seeing Russians attack cities and this half of the country really for the first time. A large strike happened just about two and a half hours north of here. The city of Lunds, they took out an airport in that region. Now, this is concerning, obviously, but really, Kira and Terry, the most aggressive fighting still remains around the capital city of Kiev on the eastern front and also down south. Down south is where we're just getting some really horrific reports. You talked about Mariupol quite a bit. That city that is completely encircled by Russians, people there uh, dealing with bombings for more than 10 days, no food, no water, no heat. You know, we were just speaking moments ago with uh, the governor in the city just north of Mariupol. Uh, he was supposed to be on a Zoom call with us. He had to frantically uh, cancel that at the last minute because he was undergoing shelling. They lost internet. They lost cell service. He was sending us some videos. Fires are breaking out across the city. This is all happening right now overnight. And, you know, just as, as cities are, are trying to find some peace for so many right now, just the bombing and shellings are not stopping. And they likely won't. That Russian way of war, the Putin way of war that we're seeing every day spread across that country tragically. And Alex, let me go to you. The United States today continuing uh, its essential uh, contribution here in some ways, which is economic sanctions, uh, essentially downgrading Russia's trade status, more impact, port bans, testing the limits of how much a country can be sanctioned. Is it going to make a difference? Does the United States believe, does the U.S. government believe, that it is impacting the decision-making of Vladimir Putin at all? Well, uh, Terry, yes, they do, and to be just matter of fact. And I mean, I think I think some gleaning from that is even just hearing Putin and and uh, the Belarusian president Lukashenko talk about these uh, these these tariffs and these sanctions. Uh, they've made light of them, but the fact that they're talking about them means that it's clearly something that's gotten their attention. And and something else on on top of these new sanctions for seafood, alcohol, uh, and, and and other uh, other imports that went in effect today, you also heard a renewed call to add additional names of Russian oligarchs to uh, this G7 list. They call it the kleptocracy. And, and even the Justice Department today uh, assembling another, uh, another task force targeting these sanctioned oligarchs. You see uh, a continued effort not just to go after Russia's key exports, but also its most influential and richest citizens. And that's something that the United States believes is going to ultimately get Vladimir Putin attention. And Phil, you know, it's expected to get to four degrees below zero this weekend. You've been talking about how cold it's been there, especially at the border. What does this mean for the civilians that are trapped in Ukrainian cities trying to get to Poland? Well, it means that it's another night after 16 or 17 nights, another night of cold. President Zelensky said today that he's opening up uh, 12 humanitarian corridors to get uh, food, supplies, medicine, gas, water into these cities uh, where people are just hunkered down and trying to get out. So that was good news coming from the president of Ukraine hey today. Guys, Once these talk? refugees get into Poland, they are in shock. They are horrified, they are concerned, they are worried for their children, they're worried about their fathers, their husbands and their brothers who are back in Ukraine fighting and they are in the position you're seeing right there uh, on your screen right now. They're holding their children, they're sleeping in train stations. Here in Warsaw, hundreds of thousands of refugees, too many for the city to handle right now, only 2,000 beds for hundreds of thousands of refugees. So where do you sleep? Well, in, in an arena turned into a shelter, in a mall turned into a shelter, and the compassionate machine that has been at work here uh, in Poland is really quite spectacular to see. It is just being overwhelmed right now uh, by 1.5 million refugees. Poland originally said uh, it could handle about a million. So now you have 1.5 million and the borders are still open and the refugees are still coming. And, and that compassion machine, as you say, uh, Phil, has been one of the 
main currents, to switch metaphors, of, uh, of your reporting over there. It's been remarkable to see how the Polish people and their government are standing up. But Maggie, let me, let, let me go to you. Ukrainian officials now talking about an attack in the nation of Belarus that's just to the north of Ukraine, borders Ukraine. A lot of Russian troops were staged there, and there's apparently been an attack on a Belarusian village. Uh, Ukraine say uh, this might be a false flag operation. They didn't do it, and it could be something that Belarus could now justify its own forces or Russian troops uh, staged on their, on their territory launching an attack into Ukraine. What can you tell us about that? Uh, yeah, exactly, Tara. The U.S. and Ukraine have been warning about these potential false flag operations now for days. And just a few hours ago, Ukrainian Air Force officials came out on Facebook and they said uh, they are accusing Belarusian troops of launching an aircraft from Belarus into Ukrainian airspace, firing back on that village in Belarus, but blaming the Ukrainians. Now, allegedly doing all of this so that they can then enter Ukraine. You know, so far, Terry, no Belarusian troops have actually entered Ukraine, but there's been this ongoing threat. We know that Belarus and Russia are very close. Uh, Belarus, like you said, already has been sort of a, a, a launch pad for many Russian troops to go into Ukraine, so they're already working together. And just today, the president of Belarus met with President Vladimir Putin in Moscow in Russia for five hours. So, Terry, all of this going on today, it, it seems like it can't be a coincidence. We're still waiting to find out exactly what happened, who's blaming who, where those troops are right now, if, where, and when there was this attack. But clearly, it seems like something is going on. Hmm. And Alex, uh, we saw today the president talking about the possible use or the threats of using chemical weapons on the behalf of uh, Saddam Hussein, or Saddam Hussein, <laughs> that makes me think of bio and chemical weapons, slip of the tongue there, folks, Putin. Um, and so the U.S. still will not say what the plan would be, just that, that Russia would uh, suffer uh, paying a severe price. I mean, what is the plan if indeed... Uh, Putin was to to do something. Well, Kira, so the U.S. has not tipped its hat as to what those severe consequences would be, just saying that they would be severe. Uh, but also in that, they have not ruled out military action. I, I would also note that, that the U.S. hasn't directly accused Russia of uh, using chemical weapons. The verbiage has been very, very particular. Uh, but it, what we have heard is uh, from a senior administration official that uh, the U.S. is getting reports of Russians starting to bring chem bio suits to Ukraine. And and we heard this from John Kirby during the DOD uh, presser. We heard this from Ned Price during uh, the State Department's uh, presser. Uh, when Russia accuses someone, whether it be Ukraine or the U.S., of, of doing X, Y, Z, usually it's a telegraph that they do the same thing. And you heard Russia during this uh, UN security uh, 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 conference today accusing Ukraine of using chemical weapons. They say that it might be a, a sign that Russia's going to do it themselves. Well, and, and Russia has uh, obviously uh, used chemical weapons against uh, Navalny in Russia, against the Skripals in in Britain and in Chechnya as well. So. Yeah, it's not coming out of anywhere, the threats, it's right. clearly. Uh, Maggie, Phil, Alex, thank you all so much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.